to preview this week's matchup for the Crimson Tide. I'm joined by former Alabama quarterback and current Crimson Tide Sports Network analyst John Parker. It's great to see you, John Parker. Man, it's good to be here. Game week. We're coming back. It's so excited to, to kick the season off. Uh, it's finally here. And, uh, you know, for the Tigers, they opened the season with a new head coach. Eli Drinkwitz led Appalachian State to a 12-1 record last season with the Sun Belt Conference Championship. But they're down several players due to COVID. 12 earlier in the week is down to 7 at the midpoint. They've also lost several players due to them opting out of the season. Could death be an issue for the Tigers on Saturday? I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, this season, I think it's going to be depth. It's going to be an issue for everybody the whole season. We're playing 10 games in the SEC. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be people getting sick. Just something you got to deal with. Not something you want to deal with if you're Missouri. First uh, game against Alabama. Um, you know, it, it's going to be it's going to be tough having the limited number of people they do. But you know, there's a lot to be unexpected from Drigowitz and the Missouri Tires. New look offense. New look everything for these guys. We don't know who's going to start at quarterback, so who knows? It's going to be it's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be an interesting year. As you just mentioned, along with that, there are a lot of unknowns on the offense for Missouri. The Tigers will have a new starting quarterback. There are questions on the offensive line, but they do have a new number one receiver in Virginia Tech transfer, Damon Hazelton. They also have a pretty solid duo returning at running back. What can the Tide expect from a new look Missouri offense on Saturday? I think both run and pass. They've got a lot of different weapons at receiver, two really good running backs um, that are, you know, one of them's getting close to being the all time leading rusher for Missouri. I think they're going to try to maintain balance, just like every offense does, right? You come in, you want to be 50 pass, 50% run, just to keep the defense on their heels. I think you take shots. I think if you're Missouri, you try to go after Alabama secondary early. There's some new guys back there, some true freshmen. A lot of inexperience that defense in the secondary where we're as our strength last year it's 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 a question mark right now it really is Missouri ranked 14th in total defense last season they have an all-american returning along with their sacks leader their defensive coordinator was also retained by Drinkwitz do you expect the Tigers to kind of return to form on defense against the Tide yeah you know going to be the strength of their team is the defense with so many guys coming back with their with like you said their coordinator returning so they're going to try to get back and disrupt Mac Jones they're going to try to put some pressure on him confuse him um, and get try to get in the backfield but it, it's going to be it's going to be tough for them with the amount of weapons and all of the different things that Sarkeesian is going to do for Alabama on offense but I think this is the strength of Missouri Tigers is their defense especially in the secondary six guys coming back that played and contributed last year for the Tigers so you know they're going to try to intimidate Alabama early get get up there press and just try to disrupt the passing game. Well, for Alabama, there are playmakers all over the field on offense, uh, running back, receiver, quarterback. What do you expect from Alabama on Saturday on, on offense? Points. I think they're going to uh, score and, and try to do what they did last year. Sarkeesian back, many of the guys back on offense. We lost two receivers to the first round. But we had Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle right behind them. Najee Harris, Brian Robinson, a lot of production for them. My favorite thing is four returning offensive linemen. I mean, we're going to be really strong up front in contention for the Joe Moore Award, which goes to the best offensive line unit in the country. Uh, I'm, ex I'm excited to see this team, um, especially in offense, because there's so many guys, so much firepower coming back. On defense for the Crimson Tide, they allowed 18.6 points per game last season, the most the Tide has allowed since 2007. To compare, they allowed just over eight points per game in 2011, but Alabama gets a big boost in return of linebacker Dylan Moses. Do you think his return will help the Tide return to form on defense? Yeah, yeah, I think he, he's a big uh, guy to get back. Injured last year right before the season and um, right before the season. And then, you know, coming back this year, had a chance to go to the draft. A lot of people were questioning whether he's going to go or come back. Comes back, such a leader for Alabama, getting ready for this crazy COVID 2020. Um, you know, I expect to see a lot of big things from him. A lot of people coming back up front for Alabama's front seven on defense. Mizzou expects a capacity of around 11,800 fans at Memorial Stadium. As you said, the COVID has a huge impact on this game. Will that kind of nullify the home field advantage for the Tigers? I, I think so. I, I really do. I think with, with so many uh, limited seats throughout the whole SEC, I think it's going to be different. I think it'll be some adjustments for the players. You know, you go in, you run through the tunnel, you're expecting all this energy. I just don't think it's going to be there like we've seen in the past. 
Um, I think it's good for younger players. I think we'll hear some coaching from the sidelines, some more yelling uh, from the coach, you know, get lined up right or watch out for this play. I think we'll see a lot of that. So I think the home field advantage is, is going to um, be removed. And I think it's going to be a lot of leadership. Can the guys get themselves ready and get, you know, internally get the, get the juices flowing? Well, kickoff is scheduled for 6 o'clock on ESPN. Thank you for joining us, John Parker. Look forward to talking with you again next week. Can't wait. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.